up in the morning, Sonoma County and planet Earth to all the lovely ladies and gentle gentlemen out there. A hearty and healthy Irish hello. You're listening to the Celtic Coach Radio Show, where science, spirituality, and self-discovery meet. Yeah, they come together. They have a hula, they have a ala, they have a ula, and they have lots of lala on the weekend. Yes, it's the show. And, and, and I gotta say, now today's show is, uh, I'm very excited, but you can probably hear it in my voice. Um, I should have grounded myself before the show. Damn it, man. I always come up with something I forget. We're gonna be talking today with a very, 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 very special guest. Now, um, I had the honor of, uh, speaking to our guest today, um, at a, uh, at a, uh, a coffee shop in, um, down in Sebastopol in, in downtown. And I was I was so impressed by this guy. I have to say, I was really impressed that I decided, you know, I've got I've to bring this guy. I've got to bring him on the show. Um, now, I'm just pulling up his, uh, his file here, and I'm not being very professional at all, but I pulled it up earlier, and now it just went missing. So let me, let me re-pull it up. Now, if you just joined us, you're listening to 92.5 FM, F for Frank and M for... Matilda. All right, then uh, you can pick us up at home at 92.5 on the radio dial, or you can go to kows.fm and pick us up live uh, every Friday on the Celtic Coach Radio Show from 1 to 3, where we interview some of the greatest, some of the best, some of the most interesting people, leaders, healers, um, trainers, teachers on the planet. And, and today's guest is no different at all. Please put your virtual hands together for my guest, Onye Omachi. Now, he is a world-renowned for his profound spiritual teachings and revelations, and as a spiritual healer, he's an advisor, a teacher, an author, and if that's not enough, he's also a master drummer. Yeah. And I should have, I should have asked you to bring the drummer to, to the drum today, Onye. I totally forgot. However, I'm Irish. That's my... Uh, that's my calling. Um, <laughs> he's also inherited deep knowledge in the natural healing, which we're going to talk a lot about today, and has received the anointing of the Holy Spirit to heal, counsel, and prophesy. In the African Judeo-Christian traditions, the young Onye experienced severe spiritual discipline in sacred rites of passages and initiations. He especially valued the time spent with his mother and his grandmother, who was a respected wise woman and healer, as well as his granduncle, the village craftsman. Over over time, he has blended his unique life experiences and abilities to transform those he encounters around him. So we're going to be talking a lot today about, are we spiritual beings having a human experience, or are we just, did we just somehow, 250,000 years ago, we just showed up, and we have no idea where we where we showed up, where we came from, or where we're even going. We're also going to be talking today about, there's a lot of talk today about healing the planet. And so we're going to talk to Anya today about how do we heal ourselves? How do we get back in touch with that innate intelligence, that innate wisdom, that spirit, that God spark, whatever you want to call it? I, I don't think it's like, you know, it's like, what do, what do you call a, a deaf dog? You can call it anything at all. It doesn't mind. So I don't think God minds what we call him, her, she, it, they, whatever it might be. But we're going to talk about that today. Why do people get sick? Why is it that our planetary, the beings on the planet right now, over 50% of the people on the planet are, are overweight and obese and struggling with some form of um, either alcohol, drug, or some type of an addiction? What is going on in the planet? So we're going to talk to Anya and, and get his perspective on, you know, what is going on with the planet? Because a lot of people want to know. A lot of people are trying to figure it out. And, uh, you know, it's above my pay grade. So I brought somebody in who who hopefully can shed a little bit of divine light on, on, on these days that we're going through right now. Uh, we're also going to talk about something fascinating that, that, that I could have quite a bit of it in my life, dying and love. Now, not that I've died a million times, although if you believe in incarnation, this is probably my 150th million time around, but that's another show. But dying, loss, and grief, and, and, and Anya does counseling around this, so we're going to talk about that today as well. But uh, all of that and more, please welcome to the show Anya Anya Machi. Anya, you're very welcome. Thank you. How are you, sir? I'm feeling well. All right, let me uh, let me just check now. All right, we have you on. Uh, we have you on the mic, on you. Just say hello again there. 
Hello. All right. All right. There Can we go. There All we right. hear you. Fantastic. Anya, you're very welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, I... Uh, I had the uh, I had the fortune of having a cup of coffee with you, and, and I said I got to get this guy on the show. <laughs> um, so, so you're very welcome, Anya. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you for being here and for sharing your time, your energy, and your space with us. Yeah. Anya, talk to us a little bit now. I I find this fascinating that you haven't had the 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 usual upbringing of you know going to school every day and just learning math and history and geography. You have you've kind of had a, a, a uh, what should I call it? A, a spiritual um, childhood. How would you describe your childhood? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, the childhood begins, uh, I believe, before before you were born, and right in your mother's womb. While you're there, you have pretty much experienced everything that you want to know about the nature of life, the cycles of life, the um, all aspects of existence, including your own divinity, divine inspiration through from the spiritual world to the to the earth. Mm-hmm. With all of that, you have a fundamental um, base to which you can coexist with yourself and with others. Mm. And the, when then you have arrived to the earth, you are welcomed by the community, by the village, through music, through songs, mm. through sounds, the sounds of the drum, the sound of... Um, the, the uh, wailing of praises and rejoice that a child have have arrived yeah, yeah. to the community. Yeah, I, I I I like that type of arrival. You yes. know, here in the West, we we you know we 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 pop out, we get a smack on the bottom, and uh, we're in a very sterile environment, and it's kind of like. <laughs> okay, a bit of a snip here. All right, start crying. Here you go. Yeah. This is the world you're going to live in. Just cry for a while. Get used to it. Yeah. The, the <laughs> first sound of the child is the cry. Yeah. Usually in the 30s or 40s, the the doctors will uh, will beat, right? Will smack the yeah. child to open up its uh, breath. Yeah. It, it right away that's right there's violence against humanity yeah, yeah against another human being huh in africa as we have experienced we use this the welcoming sound of love welcoming sound of the drum mm. of sound of rejoice and celebration what a magnet magnificent way to come into the into the world yeah. as the child invoke its natural cry yeah. to do the you, community. Do you think that has an amp- an impact on ye? Like when, when when a baby comes into the world, do you think we, we're, we're imprinted right at that moment where we come in, where it's a celebration, or where we come in and it's like kind of like, all right, start smiling, huh? <laughs> you know, start crying. Is that imprinted on the baby at that young of an age? To work to the rival, come, yeah. So it's certainly wouldn't any child be welcome with such um, pronouncement? Yeah, yeah. Of welcoming, yeah. Wouldn't anyone, any child? We're all children of God, and we expect the best from uh, those living to welcome yeah. us with dignity, with respect. Beyond that, respect of the woman, the mother giving birth to that child. Both the child and the mother are fully engaged in this pronouncement of joy yeah. and happiness. And the whole community. And the whole community. Yeah. It's incredible. You talk about the labor which the experience which the woman had or have during this process, during this experience, it's imaginable the painless experience the woman become 
welcoming the child herself yeah, into the world. Yeah, yeah. Wow. You know? Wow. Incredible. Yeah. Well, we, we've certainly started at the, we've started our conversation on you right at the start. <laughs> <laughs> so we can only go linearly or up from here. Tell us a little bit about your childhood. How, how was your childhood not that you know everyone's childhood, but how would you say growing up in Africa is different than growing up in the West as a child? How how was your experience different there? Uh, um, how many years you have? How much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we got a condensed hour. <laughs> well, talk about some of the you know your childhood experiences that 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 made a big impact on you in terms of the work that you're doing today. My childhood was quite natural, yeah. whereby um, you are allowed to be free. You are engaged in all aspects of natural world. Um, your ability to foresee things in the future or know things naturally uh, well developed. It's, it's recognized oh. by the elders or by the family members or anyone else in the village that knows the family. You are introduced and guided and provided the support that you need to uh, develop these abilities so wow. you can continue in your life. So are we talking about like 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 intuition, gift of prophecy? Intuition, gift of prophecy, gifts, gifts of music, mm -hmm, gifts mm -hmm. of um, healing, so to speak. You yeah. know, healing is available at any age, wow. at any time. And they're de they were they were they were developed. You were like 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 trained in this. I've had it right from my mother. I believe from my mother's womb, you know, yeah. before that, I, I believe ordained and they ordained in the spirit. Yeah. I've been ordained in the spiritual world before I arrived. Yeah. Wow. Now, did you always know that you would be, you would be working with people and in, in, in terms of, I call it spiritual healing. I mean, that's, that's, yeah, is that, that's is that a good word? Is that a good word? I know. Yeah. yeah. Well, what would you call it? Uh, you know, today's world healing is just overused. Yeah, As yeah. People a little use bit. <laughs> shaman or any type of uh, modality. Yes, yes, it's just so overused. Or depends on how the method in which you are engaged in connecting with the powers above. Yeah, yeah. Whether you call it God, like you said earlier, or any name that you choose, but there is something that is. Uh, magnetically strong, powerful, yeah. that gives us the inspiration to to have this um, exchange yeah, of yeah. healing. Now, can you share any experiences that you've had, spiritual experiences growing up, you know, into your... Now, now when, when did you come to America? Oh, I came here in 1970. 1970. 1970, yeah. Um, and I have no... You could be 21, mate. I have no I was idea. <laughs> about 16, 16 or 17 years old. Yeah. yeah. So talk a little bit. I mean, what kinds of experiences did you have that kind of paved the way for the work that you do with people? Because you do a lot of uh, 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 prayer healing, and you shared a few stories with me that, that certainly had me thinking, like, Wow. That's, you know, we over here would call, oh, that's miraculous, that's miracle. Yeah. But um, I, I'm not sure that you, from our conversation, you, I, I felt that it was like, well, no, it's not that it's miraculous, it's just... A way of it's, life. It's a way of life. It's yeah. something that we yeah. can connect to at any moment. Let's say, for instance, in, in the mornings when the families are awake in, for the day, and yeah. everyone gathers together for prayer. So this was a this was a like a, a daily thing. It's in your, a daily in your thing. Village. You know, yeah. it could be four o'clock in the morning. Everybody is awake, even to the youngest baby wow. in the family. So we commune in prayer, basically to give thanks of the past, present, and the future. Yeah, and to uh, witness each other's presence as a community, as a family, and to ask for the grace of God to abide in us to serve each other and serve others that come to us in the village on that day. Mm -hmm. And 
furthermore, if you have any dream or any kind of messages from the in the spiritual world that is unclear, you want some uh, clarity. Someone in the family will give an advice oh, or oh. be inspired to give you direction or give you clarity to your dream yeah. or so forth and so on. Or any, and again, during the prayer, we are consumed by the spirit of the Holy Spirit, which by you can see visions and beyond because there's music involved as chanting where you are engaged in in a higher state of consciousness. Right, so it can be transcendental. It, it, yeah. Transcendental, yeah. yeah. Here they say transcendental meditation. Mm-hmm. Here you have transcendental worship or transcendental communion, yes, renewal yes. of, 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 uh, prayer, morning prayers. So this is how we start the day. So we, after that, they will go about our business. Mm. You know, do what we need to do and have blessings from the elders, uh, person in the family, it's your grandparents or a mother to bless us, the children before they, uh, they, they engage in their chores for mm-hmm. the, for the, uh, 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 for the morning. Yeah. And before we are ready for school, we will travel about maybe 10 miles to the river to fetch water. Oh my gosh. Carry it on our head or to the forest to get some firewood back to the compound, to the village, to the family. Food is prepared. Then we will walk to school. Mm. Another 10 miles, one way, then come back. So always using our footmobile, yeah. engaging our body, mind, our spirit. At this time, on our, on our route to school, back and forth, we have a reflective, reflective time. Yeah. Individually and also as a group. Usually we are three or four children or five, maybe six traveling together to the same school. Oh wow. So we have individual time to reflect. Yeah, and, and, and it's amazing that you know that, like, I mean, me going to school, you know, was, <laughs> Mm-hmm. I'd get on the bus and try to smoke as many cigarettes as I could, <laughs> you know, before I got to school. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was part of your culture in terms of that reflective time, which is very important, very by the way. Very important time, yes, yeah. you know. Yeah. Looking back today, I, I, all of this prepares you. Going to the farm, going mm-hmm. to the stream, mm-hmm. going to school, you know, alone or together. You are engaged. You are in dialogue. You are in some subliminal uh, conversation with some uh, divinity or some sort. Yeah. You know, whether it's ancestors or Christian God or or village God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's one of the things that I, you know, when I'm working with clients, being a life coach, one of the things that I that I I find is so powerful is to ask them to the reflect on their experience of life. Yes. You know, whether it's just an experience of an argument they've had with their husband or wife or a boss or a colleague or something, just to, uh, I call it ponder and pause. Yes. And I do that more. I think that's probably one of the greatest gifts that I bring to um, my coaching. Yes. Is just to ask people to slow down. Down. Slow down. What, why, what do you think's going on in the world? And I, I read a bit about on your, on your, on your website at onye, onye machi.com, which we'll, we'll give the listeners. Uh, people are saying, uh, what did he just say? Uh, we'll spell it for you at the end. Trust me. <laughs> I had to, I had to, I had to get clarification from Onye that I was saying the name properly. So, so forgive yourselves. It's, to, it's totally fine. Um, What's going on in the world today, Anya? So let's let's take you out of Africa. Let's bring you into United States at sixteen, and you start to. I mean, it, it's. I think it's such a great perspective, Anya, that you've had that life in a village, and now you have a life where you you know you travel around the world and Correct. and 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 doing healings and and talks and, mm-hmm. and different things. Um, you you've had kind of you've had a nice balance of both. 
Correct. What do you think's going on in the world, Anya? What, what, what you talk about on your website a little bit about the fast-paced society and its impact. What's going on in terms of, 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 of the people? Why are so many people on Xanax and Prozac and alcohol and, and, you know, people say, we need to get rid of all the Xanax and the Prozac and the alcohol and the cigarettes. And I think to myself, if you did that, the world would explode. Like if you took away people's, if you took away everybody's little addiction or soft addiction, television, whatever it might be, I, I think we'd all go insane. Definitely. Well, what, what's going on in the world? What's the problem first, Anya? Let's talk about that first. Uh, well, we've lost our connection or connectivity to the natural world, mm. you know? Now, when you say the natural world, what, what do you mean? Natural world, we have everything. Everything we need is already bestowed upon us, is given to us. We're blessed here on earth. We don't have the patience to take time to relate to the gifts given to us. Mm -hmm. We are looking for something else. Yes. Somewhere <laughs> else. Yes. Rather than ourselves. Right. Outside of ourselves. Outside of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First, when you are in nature, like I just said to you earlier, when we are young, we travel on foot, time for reflection, etc. When do we have time for reflection? When does family come together? With their children, how many families in in the in our so, in our modern societies today yeah. have the time to have the children around to eat together, or the parents speak to their children, mm -hmm. or the grandparents, everyone coming together at a place of love. Caring and kindness. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm trying to think when that happens for me, Onye, and it's it's weddings and funerals. Yes, you know, is there's the even at the, yeah, yeah time. Yeah, wedding and funerals, All and right? Other or other passages, birthdays, right? Yeah. So, in the natural world, you when you are sick. I remember at the time I wasn't feeling too well. I had malaria of mm -hmm. some sort. My grandmother made me. Um, what was that? She asked me to get out of bed and go into the forest and bring some herbal medicine and cook it myself. Wow. I was sick. I had malaria. Yeah. High fever. It didn't phase her. And I must obey. I must listen and took her advice and went to the forest. In the process of that, I begin to feel, okay, my body is good enough to walk to the forest and get some herbs, boil it, cook it, and took care of myself. Although they helped me as well. Hmm. You know, after all that, I was fine. You begin to understand the independence of your own health. Taking inspiration and taking the initiatives to to take action, mm -hmm. then you know the type of plants that you that is required for the type of illness that you have. I th I think in our culture, well, I speak from my own experience. You know, like I've been going through vertigo for two years, as I shared when when we talked, uh, and and I'm looking forward to to meeting you next week and, and having a, a session around that. Um, and one of the things that I, I noticed earlier on was, and I noticed this in, in the health profession in general, and again, this is not to, to, to down the health profession. I'm, we're not in any way, you know, saying, hey, down with the health profession. But it's more to shine a light on you, I think, on, you know, what can we do? You know, like, I, I know that, that when I, when I first got that, had that experience, I was going around to everyone, fix me, help me, yes. heal me, mm -hmm. tell me what to do. Yes. I totally gave all my power away to someone else. Correct. And now, of course, I brought it back to myself and I said, okay, well, now, now, what can I do? 
you know, knowing that there's health professionals out there and I've had all the tests and all the different things and, 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 and knowing that there are certain things that I do. But it's interesting in the moments when, when, when we're ill or, or diseased or, or sick that we're very readily willing to give our, our power away. Mm-hmm. <coughs> um, why is that on you? Why why are we so willing to say to someone, "Hey, you figure it out," <laughs> as opposed to me taking you know responsibility for that part of my, you know, the healing? Because we are in a society whereby everything is so fast paced, everything is fast, everything is given to you readily, right? Without taking responsibilities. If I hadn't taken certain responsibilities, my own cure then how would I understand truly what is happening within me? Mm. So you have time to reflect. We don't have time here to really take time profoundly to go within, Mm -hmm. to rediscover, rediscover what has happened. Yeah, and, and I would say make the time as opposed to how, because we have the time, we're just not making we the time. We have the time, yeah. but we are not encouraged to make the time. Right, right. That's the point. We are not encouraged to to have the freedom to exercise the responsibilities given to us. Yeah. To 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 the willpower, I should say, mm-hmm. to to take action, to uh, eradicate. What is plagued upon us? Yeah, wow. The, the cause is an effect. Yeah. If you don't understand the cause, how can you heal? How can you transform it? And 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 a lot of a lot of our culture, and, and I speak, you know, from my own experience too, is that the cause we're we're we're. we're I'm in a society where the cause is is kind of the last thing that we look at. We look at, you know, a lot of medications and stuff out there. And again, I'm not bash, bashing them. I, I take medications myself for the vertigo when I have an episode, uh, you know. But uh, I think also there's a there's a part of my experience where I'm just not taking the time to really look at what's what's in my control and also to look at, you know, how might I be partly creating this experience, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I thought that I I that I've realized many times is that it's not that medication is bad. It's not bad. Medication has truly helped a lot of people yeah, yeah. in this world. The point is that the uh, the medications are diluted so much that you have to spend so much more money and to have it um, in a potent state. Right, right. Beyond that, then you have to do the side effects. If this so-called medicine is good to to uh, effectively cure or remedy your situation, why are we having the side effects? Right. We shouldn't. But the the nat- in the natural world, it is not so. The covenant of cure and healing is to purify impurities and the plants and the herbs so you can heal. Mind you, that the body, the physical body, is created to regenerate itself. Now this, now this we're going to talk about. I'm, we're going to go for a short break, and this is what I want to talk to you about: is how do we connect to the inner body that it starts to heal ourselves? And I know you've had quite a bit of experience with with the work that you do in the world and with people. So we're going to come back and talk to that on you. I think okay. that'll be a that'll be a nice uh, a, a nice pause for 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 people to just. Take a moment, ponder, grab some tea. We're going to be right back with Anya after this uh, after this uh, little radio station break. So please stay tuned, everyone. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and all the human beings having a spiritual experience. Are are we spiritual beings having a human experience? Oh, 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 oh. That and much more. All right. Uh, welcome back. You're listening to the Celtic Coach Radio Show, where science, spirituality, and self-discovery meet. You're listening on 92.5 FM, F for Frank, M for... That's the only special effects you're going to have on the show. There's there's no other special effects. I mean, I have a whole computer full of special effects, but but that's as good as it gets on yay. Yeah. I, I, I can't, sure. yeah. <laughs> you know, we got a cow mooing. That's Very about nice. it. it. All right. Welcome back, everyone. We're here every Friday from 1 to 3. And our special guest today, very, very fascinating man. And I hope you're enjoying the, uh, the talk today. I know I am. Talked a little bit about, you know, What's going on with the world? How is it that we've lost touch? And as Anya was, was sharing there, a, a good idea, not something that we're telling you to do, but a good idea would be to start to make some time to reflect on your own experience. You know, Anya was sharing about his, his time growing up in Africa, in the communities, and how walking to school, he would take time, encouraged to take time, to reflect on the experience of life. And so, you know, hopefully you're, you're starting to hear a few little things that might be helpful in our show today. So just recapping, taking a moment to reflect on your experience of life, taking a moment to slow down to the speed of life as opposed to trying to, trying to live life at the speed of our thinking, which is going 100 miles an hour and it's not possible, slowing down to the speed of life, which is, you know, the here and now. It's going at, I don't know, what would you say, five miles an hour speed of life, Anya, <laughs> six miles? Well, like, what is the speed of now? <laughs> relative. It's relative. It is all relative, depending on who you speak to, right? That's true. All right. Welcome back, Anya. So talk to us about talk to us about self-healing, Anya. Now, I know you've had a lot of experience in this world, and you've been, uh, you've been doing a lot of uh, 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 healing with people for what now, 20, 30 years, something like that? All my life, pretty much. All your life, pretty much. Now, now, could you share a story with with us of of a healing that that you would say we would call miraculous? You know, we would call, oh my God, wow, I got to hire this guy. Um, but it's not you doing the healing, is it? No. Who, who's doing the healing? It's not no, no, like a leprechaun behind you that's doing the. I mean, who's doing the healing here? Well, I I say God, uh, Christ. The Holy Spirit, Holy Mother of God. I mean, it's uh, an energy that is far surpasses my comprehension to understand. Yeah. You know, call it what you want. You know, all I know is that this supernatural power it do exist. Just look at the creation of the world, of the universe itself. Which is quite big. It's quite big. I always often say... It's not big enough. Yeah. For 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 who? <laughs> the, how could we truly imagine how big and more yeah. the universe is? It's it's far out. Yeah. It's, and, and, and and scientists say now on you that 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 the very fact that we'll we'll never find the edge of the universe because the very fact that we're looking means that we're creating it. Like we're creating it out of our own experience. So there'll never be an end because we're always creating it until we're not creating it anymore. Correct. Yeah. We can never... The uh, It's it's all in a state of consciousness. Yes, yeah. What yeah. you wish to create or destroy, mm -hmm. we have that willpower. It is already given to us. Mm. It all depends on how capable we are hmm. to understand the frequency of positivity, truth telling, of love, with dignity and integrity. Hmm. So so let's talk about that on you. Let's talk about, about healing from the inside out. Because myself included now, this is one of the reasons that I sought you out for some healing was because I'm not getting any answers. Correct. The vertigo is not, I'm not getting any answers. And this right. is two and a half years now. And my, my, my quality of life has, has diminished, I have to say, in yeah. terms of no working out. Although that's yeah. kind of a good thing because yeah. I don't have to work out. Mm -hmm. But I've noticed that I'll, I'll, I'll have vertigo. You know, I'll have, I'll have, 
I mean, attack is a strong word, but I'll have an episode of vertigo if I work out, if I do anything that kind yeah. of messes with my body temperament. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not getting any answers. Um, uh, however, the medication does help when I get that. So talk to me about what part of healing, Anya, is in our control? Our belief system. Our belief system. So talk to me about that. Okay, what do you mean? belief system, meaning how much do you trust yourself? How much do you know of yourself or situations around you that required that requires no fear, no limitations or whatsoever that you can say to yourself, I am healed. Is that what Christ said? Hmm. He says, you are healed. Is there any doubt around it? Lots. Like if I was to say to myself, Anya, and, and, I, and I'm being kind of the, uh, the, the advocate for the listener yes, right uh, now, because yeah. I know what they're thinking. I'm thinking the same thing. Well, yeah. I've, uh, I've, often, I've often kind of tried to force myself to believe yeah. I'm healed or there's no yeah. vertigo or it Correct. doesn't exist. Yeah. And why, why does that not work? Because I don't believe well or hard enough. Or <laughs> like why does that not work? Um, what's missing there? In terms of self-healing, the belief part. What's missing is that is the how we betray ourselves and not allowing ourselves to rip from the gift of um, of the of of power that we have. We all have some elements of gifts of power to remember. I talked about the regeneration mm -hmm. of our body system. If we deny it, we deny all aspects of our being to exist. And when you say the, deny it, like you mean, what do you mean by deny, deny it? Deny it by refusing it, by not accepting it, by not acknowledging it. Oh, yes. By okay. not uh, believing it's going to work. Uh, by being so negative, right there, once you are, once you have negated the thought, right that moment, you've lost everything. Hmm. When you are capable to nourish your trust and your cap capacity to exude beyond it, you're there. It doesn't mean that you're not going to take steps. To eradicate the situation that you have or seek help when you wanted the support. But within yourself, it's all very possible. For instance, those that have had some clients have had cancer issues. So talk to me about one of your cases okay? so that people can get, a, get an okay. idea of, so, the, of the kinds of experiences that you've had with people. I was in Europe many times. I've been, I have clients in Germany and other places, Switzerland and other places in the, in the world. And you have someone with a cancer situation, all right? And... <laughs> When they come to me, I have the gift to see it through their body and see what is going on. So you can look at someone and and see what's going on, like yes, I could. I, I'm I, thinking I, Superman I, here with yeah, the X-ray yeah, vision. Yes, it's not an X-ray vision. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You see see them whether they're present with you mm -hmm. or distance, because distance has no barrier to healing or prayers. It's all energy, magnetic field, divine, call it divine magnetic, magnetic field mm -hmm. to which we can zone in and see. And which going. science has proven that the, that, that the actual field, the divine field of the ether, the etheric field, it, it actually exists. So. Yes. It does Side have, note there, uh, listeners. Yeah. Then, then you, then you see it most of the time you, I have no idea what is going on, all I know is that I could feel a shift that has taken place in this person's body. 
But you can feel the I shift. I can feel the shift. That's taking place in their body. In the body. They might uh-huh. not recognize it yeah, yet. Yeah. You know? But I know, and I'll say to the person, go in peace and find good health and move forward. Yeah, and they, and they, they look at you with, like the deer, the deer in the headlights. Exactly. Yeah. Then I'll say, go and check with your doctor. Definitely, I believe spirituality and medicine should work together. Hmm. So now, what yeah. what has happened? Because I I know yeah. I, I know for the listeners, by the way, Anya he, he's been very graceful, but he, he he's speaking about an actual person that did come to him for cancer, a lady that you that you shared, and and you said, hey, go in peace, you're cured, and and she was like, what what what? Yeah. What, what what's happened in the interim between you and the lady? What what's happened there that 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 has brought that healing on Anya? If you can kind of clarify it for us, what happened? Yeah, what's happened to to bring that healing forward? Is it something that you did? Is it something the lady did? Is it something that happened between you? This is something, that's what I was telling you earlier. It's a mystery to me. Right. I don't know what I do regarding healing. I have no idea. All I can tell you is that the divine presence in me and around me is at work and it's here. Mm-hmm. And I'm working for all of us, not just I'm working you. for all of us, not just to me, yeah. because I am open to transmit this information to the third party, to this to the person sitting in front of me. Now, now, does the person sitting in front of you? Do they need to believe that it's going to work? It's not necessary. It's not necessary. If they believe, just as well. Yeah. Great. Maybe it'll be a degree of fast uh, healing taking yeah, place, yeah. So depending on their constitution, depending on what's going on in their life, what is happening, you know. So this person goes home, blah, blah, blah. I said, go and check with your doctor and see. See me in six months when I come back to Europe. Mm-hmm. The same thing. Nothing. They will check. The cancer is gone. And they will, she came and I said, come back again. Go and check with your doctor in another six months. Let's meet. She went to the doctor. They checked. The cancer is gone. Hmm. Now, what kind of cancer did this, did this lady have? It's um, lymphoma, I think, uh, lung Mm-hmm. Cancer. It's, yeah, uh, there are different types of cancer. Some, as uh, it's different situations, like breast cancer. You know, a woman here locally came. This was about maybe five years ago. A friend, a friend of mine, brought her to me, and uh, when she came, we greeted and we started the prayer. After so she's the, praying with you. She pray, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, but that's not necessary if people are not into prayer. Yeah, it's not necessary. She right, pray right. with me, mm-hmm. or I thought we just have conversation, normal conversations, nothing, you know, serious. Just talked about what's going on. Yeah, um, just simple things of that nature. Then uh, she goes home. The cancer disappears. Now, now, do you do you do you go? Holy moly! I mean, does that does that does that surprise you every time, or do you just expect it now? I mean, nothing. It would surprise the hell out of me. Yeah, not. No pun intended. I'm always amazed. Yeah, and I'm always uh, in in awe when there's a state when a miracles happens in people's lives mm. because it's a wonder. It's a mystery. It's something I couldn't possibly imagine I doing. I have no idea right. because I know nothing. I'm not a doctor. Yeah. I know nothing. So you basically just, you meet these people, you start praying with them. Pray with them or whether they're aware of it or not. Yeah. Or they, they have to come and we'll go through the process of getting to know each other. Yeah. In the presence of God. Mm-hmm. In the presence of God. There yeah. has to be a unified force, divine force amongst us. Now, now, what about the people on ye? Because um, I, I'm sure that not everyone gets healed that comes to you. Mm-hmm. Now, why do you, why do you think that is? 
Is God saying yes, no, yes, no? <laughs> I mean, he's not. She's not picking and choosing, is she? No, the, the, the healing is available for everybody. That would depend on the individual. If yeah. they are willing, like I said earlier, if if they have the belief or they have things they need to sort out here in the world before the healing takes place. Right. Like, mm-hmm. At times, some mm-hmm. people hang on to their healing. Until they are completed, they, until the, all your finished businesses in, in this lifetime is completed. Once it's completed, voila. Now, now when you say, when you say things to sort out in this world, what do you mean by that? Unfinished business, for instance, if they have, they have done some bad deeds Mm -hmm. against themselves or against Another person, yeah. or they may have forgotten about it. First is to apologize and and ask for forgiveness on both sides, and to bring uh, the justice on both sides cleared up. Mm-hmm. So that way, when you're going through your healing process, the blessings that comes upon you through in that time is. Uh, magnified yeah. and quickly resolved. Quickly resolved. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> now, Onye, share with the listeners, what are some questions? Um, and I know you're not a life coach, but <laughs> um, share with the listeners, Onye, some questions <clears throat> that they could ask themselves. Let's say the listeners are out there and they're struggling with some type of a dis-ease in the body. Yes. And, I, and, I, and I say dis-ease because... Um, Disease is really two words, a dis-ease, you know, you're dis and your ease. That natural ease that we already have in the body. Yes. We are, we are already peaceful. We are already joyful. We are perfect. We are already perfect, but yes. our thinking and our feeling gets in the way of that. Definitely. Creating, you know, as one, I remember Paramahansa Yogananda saying that all, all disease is created in the mind. Total. Um, what are some questions that, that, that people can ask? What are some questions um, that people can ask um, themselves in terms of their suffering or they have a, some type of a disease in the body? What are some questions they could ask themselves in terms of how to, uh, how to get healing? That's a very good question. Mm. The question I will ask is to, to forgive me for what I have done to myself and to others. If I have hurt you in any way, that that unconscious, we do a lot of things unconscious. Oh boy, do we ever. And it's only when we go into a reflective, contemporary, completative time or meditative time, then you can realize, recall those things. Then you realize it, then you seek clarity, Mm -hmm. profound clarity. Then you can speak directly to the situation or to the disease in the body and say, why are you here in my body? What is it you need to teach me? Mm. How long do you plan to stay here? (laughs) Oh, God. That's a good one. Yes. Yeah. Then if you have no purpose in my body, leave. Mm. I bless you. Go and never return. Mm. That's powerful. Powerful. Why do you why do you think disease lingers in, in people's bodies, Onye? Because people carry the pains and sufferings with them right from birth. Yeah. They carry it because they are comfortable. They can't do anything else. Because they are saddened, they're angered. They can relinquish all of this. So the body is a very powerful medium to contain all these things comfortably. Yeah. The yeah. body, that's what the body does. Imagine 
all types approaches to healing, the body takes it on. Yeah, the, bo- the body is incredible. Isn't it's it? incredible. It's really incredible. It's a perfect human machinery. Yeah, yeah, it's totally incredible what what it takes on, what it and what it holds on to.